It's day 12 of the 31 day safer pilot challenge in flight electrical fire. I should do this first. Target, power back, head reason flat, perfect land is still starting the perfect pattern. What is happening, M0 Nation? Jason Shepard here, M0A Online Ground School. It's day 12 of the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. Check in in the comments down below who is 12 for 12. In addition to that, who remembers 2 3 Mike Zulu's one and only forever, I'm speaking that into existence, 7700? What do I mean by that? Well, I actually wasn't in the airplane. Uh, in flight emergency, right? Emergency transponder squawk codes, squawking 7700. It was actually Matt and Tom who still work for M08 to this day, even despite the 7700, right? Which to the Mike Zulu cause, they did not, certainly did not cause it. They had an in-flight electrical, well, wouldn't call it a fire, it was smoke, but where there's smoke, there's usually fire. Long story for another day, I'll share with you, it turns out being a bad alternator uh, circuit breaker. Circuit breaker popped, they followed the rule. I give a circuit breaker one more chance, as we learned, right? They push that circuit breaker in, it began to smoke, it popped again on its own. If not, they're ready to pull it. They squawked 7,700 smoke in the cockpit and they diverted. They're on an IFR flight plan, diverted to the land, no further incident. Wow. You know, if you think about, we've spent a lot of time these past few days talking about emergencies, because that's an area that gets neglected until it's game time, right? We spend so much time, Jason, help me get better at my steep turns, help me get better at my landings. And we're doing all that too, but. Emergencies are something we need to practice more. An in-flight electrical fire, wow, something to not mess around with, okay? Now, let's get back to the root cause. What's causing this in-flight electrical fire first? Well, think about it. What's actually the issue? I've seen NTSB reports where it was a wingtip light that was causing the issue and was smoking or actually on fire. In Tudor Mike Zulu's case, it was a bad alternator circuit breaker that began uh, smoking. We've had other uh, you know, issues, uh, wires touching, whatever that may be that's causing these issues. The main thing you have to remember is if I have an in-flight electrical issue, it's a problem because the first thing I need to do, now first thing really is follow what your checklist says, but I'd make an argument that 99% of you out there, your checklist says if you have an in-flight electrical issue, step one is what? Master switch off, which is totally the right thing to do. Let's shut down the power to this thing. But now I have a problem. The smoke happened so quick, I never had an opportunity to even communicate my message, and now I've turned everything off and I'm maybe I stopped the in-flight electrical fire or the smell of it, right? We didn't know what an electrical fire smells like. Most of you know that. I stopped that, but now how do I communicate that message? Well, a wise instructor once told me, we can still troubleshoot from this, this circumstance. Now again, consult your POH with this. This is just general guidelines. Master switch off first and foremost. Did that solve my issue? If the answer is yes, Right, let's, let's ventilate the cabin, let's get that nasty smell, let's get that smoke out of there. The engine's gonna continue to run. If you just wanna land, let's land. If you desire to troubleshoot further, let's troubleshoot. You're the pilot in command. 91.3 in the, in the Code of Federal Regulations says, you're the pilot in command, you have the final authority as the safety of this flight, right? Land right away, no radio at a pilot controlled airport, or we can troubleshoot. How might you troubleshoot? Well, you don't wanna turn the master switch back on just yet, that's, that's, was the problem, something electrical. Do you know how to individually turn off each and every item? Do you know how to turn off um, your, your Garmin uh, 430, 530, whatever, whatever it is you have, your, your Avidyne unit? Do you know how to manually turn those off? Some of those are digital buttons, so you may not be able to turn those off. Do you know then where those circuit breakers are? Because here's what I would recommend. Master switches off, manually turn off everything that you can, and some of you, like all my stuff, is an electronic push button, so you'd have to have me on to then manually shut it down. But each thing has a circuit breaker, and they're so well labeled. Let's take off COM1, COM2, NAV1, NAV2, transponder, air conditioner. Like, let, let's pull all these different breakers here, then let's turn the master switch back on, okay? 
Um, did the smoke start again? If so, master switch back off, land this thing, there's a problem. If not, okay, it's clearly one of these issues that I have trouble shot and pulled the breaker on. Let's try COM1 because I'd really like some radios in the situation. Push in that breaker or turn on COM1. No smoke? Good. I'd probably stop there, communicate my message, and get the airplane on the ground. If you desire to continue though, you continue on. You, I really want COM2 for some reason. I don't know why you would, but you really want COM2. You push in the breaker for COM2 or you physically turn COM2 on. The smoke starts up again. I know the problem now. Pull that breaker, turn it off, whatever it is. You can go master switch off again, just to be quick about it, whatever you want. But now you've solved, well, maybe you've solved the issue. Me personally, I'd have been real thankful if I had the master switch on and just COM1 on. That would make me feel way better. But it's also why I fly with a handheld radio. A part of me says, you know what? Master switch off, the engine's still going. I know I don't have any radios or instruments, depending on what kind of airplane I'm flying. It's VFR and I'm pretty happy though. If this is IFR, I'm gonna to need to get some things back online here, right? So we have to troubleshoot that situation. But first things first, that master switch. Um, some of you, your POH, if it varies, it may say avionics master first, but leave the master switch on. And, and that could be correct as well. But in my case, that wouldn't have worked because, not in my case, in Matt and Tom's case, in To The Reg Zulu, the alternator was the issue. So they were just delayed um, extinguishing that, that smoke and potential fire from there. So I would love for you to do a little homework. You know, we spend so much time focused on engine failures in flight and engine fires on start and all these things, but when's the last time you thought about an electrical fire? Especially in this day and age where all our old airplanes are getting great technology upgrades um, and, and we're, we're kind of making these, I mean, Tudor Mike Zulu is a Frankenstein, there's no doubt. It's a 1972 airplane, but you would never know it looking at it based on what we did to that panel, right? We kind of made it a Frankenstein and we've created some electrical issues from, from almost overdoing it in a way, just being honest, right? We had to really amp up our, some things and um, just running the LED lights, we had to run all new gauge of wires to get out there because the, the old 1972 wires were not enough. A lot of things we learned the hard way and had to do um, to make it right. These are the things you need to ponder and think about. Love to read your comments down below on this video if you ever experienced such or, or what does your POH recommend and say? Let me know in the comments down below this video. I will see you tomorrow for another amazing video. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you.